Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of DOD 45, Drawing Over Discussions. 45 minutes with a special guest. This is Series 3, Episode 28. Are you seriously counting episodes? I am, yes. But Episode 2 of Series 3. Does that make any sense? S three E two. That's what that's what this is. Um, <clears throat> so thank you all for joining us this afternoon or evening or morning or whatever time you're listening or watching us. Um, we are here at, at Old Blue Gallery and Guest House. The last episode was saying art by Thai Studio and Gallery. But we decided to stick with the old blue. We officially are open. And um, in case anybody is wondering what the hell Adrian is doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got... <laughs> it just doesn't fit over my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is uh, apparently in costume for our guests today. I'm a cosplay. <laughs> she's she's. Uh, I can't figure this out because the image on the screen is opposite. So I'm pulling it this way, <laughs> and it's going the wrong way. She's larping. 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 I'm just kidding. I uh, don't know what a larp. Larp. It's ro- is. cosplay. It's the. But I think I'm more of a larp than a larp. <laughs> I don't think people these days know what that word larp is. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah. So she's uh, wearing her cloak. <laughs> Because on today's episode, we are going to be chatting with the cloaks. See your cloak. It's, a, it's really a jacket, but it's got cloak vibes. I'm attached to the headphones. So. It is cloak vibes. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're going to appreciate that. Well, they're not because I'm taking it off because it's Because <laughs> you don't want to have giant head? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I don't, but no, other people probably do. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, is there, before we go any more into the cloaks, is there anything you want to talk about? No, no nothing. Cool. Well, we, the gallery, the Art by Thai Old Blue Gallery is officially open. We're pretty excited about that. It's, um, we've been working towards that for the last, uh, we, you know, we bought the place seven years ago. And tore it all down and rebuilt it. And the last two years have been the, the real aggressive building time. So the last two years have been pretty intense and long. And we had a grand opening. And lots of people came out to the grand opening of the art, the, the gallery. And it was a lot of fun. So I want to thank everybody that came out to the gallery opening. And um, if you're ever rolling through Hannibal, Missouri... Uh, you want to learn more about Mark Twain and see Mark the Mississippi, Twain. the Mississippi River that is. Come on through and hang out at the uh, at the gallery. We also have a an Airbnb right up there behind me where all those skulls are. There's an Airbnb loft up there, so you can rent uh, rent a space and stay with us. But we'd love to have you. Anyway, uh, enough of that. So, like I said, today we have we are going to be chatting with the cloaks. Which is Gelrock and A Wall One. Um, Gelrock is from Whittier, California, which is in Southern California, and it was once the largest walnut growing area in the United States. I don't know who's the largest now. Um, I don't know why I give you this information because maybe you can use it for something. But Whittier, California, was founded by the Quakers in 1887, which raises the question. Friend. What are Quakers? Friends. They're R- friends. That's it? Are you too serious? Because I don't know. Friends. Are you? I don't know what you're doing. 
It's like with uh, LDS folk brother. Well, what are Quakers though? Are they just? They're, it's a religion. Oh. But they're like Quaker oats. He was a Quaker. They're like Quaker oats. The Quaker guy. <laughs> well, that doesn't help me. He was though. a Quaker. Oh, Quaker oats. He. The Quaker what? guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of picturing sure he him. Was a Quaker. No, they like. I think. I'm picturing him as Colonel Sanders. Listen, so I don't remember what he looks I like. When I think of Quakers, I think of like historical. Uh, back a couple hundred years ago, Quakers. So the, I'm sure things have changed. Like when people think of Mormons, they probably think of right. like polygamists and this and that. But yeah, but the, the, I just feel like Quakers just wear gray and walk around calling each other friend. Well, the Quakers I'm speaking of are were from 1887, and and uh, so anyway, yeah, they founded Whittier. Is it Whittier? <laughs> they probably called it wider, wider California, and then thought that that was kind of weird, and so they added a T on there. Um, they look, they look like pilgrims. Yeah, maybe that's what they are. I don't, I don't know anything about them. I thought maybe you would know. That's that's your well, I do. I, area of expertise. I mean, I expertise. do kind of know, but I don't have a visual. I just know from like books I've read. Well, I have a visual, but I'm I'm visualing uh, Colonel Sanders. No, <laughs> there I don't. <laughs> I know, but you say the, the guy on the box on the on the Quaker Oats box and I can't picture what he even looks like now all I can picture is oh it, it does not matter yeah look <laughs> he's got like the <laughs> yeah the, the little bow tie no it's like oh. a it's like a rooster collar thing oh like a what is those those um those, I don't know I, I can't see puffy the picture, collars sure. that they used to wear oh yeah like, George Washington Bouf- type. Or I was going to say a bouffant, not a bouffant. What it, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like a, almost looks like a bib. No, not a bib. Oh, but in this one, you scroll down and it's more like a scarf. It's like a priest car- collar with like a, some swagger. Like it's got a... Like, <laughs> Whenever I hear that word swagger or thing. swag now, I, I, I immediately think of Factor Chandelier. Oh, why? What did he say? Just because he, he was using the word swag, and I hadn't heard in a long time, and I liked the way he used it. Oh. I got to get that swag going for me. Oh, the Quaker man is not an actual person. Oh. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, if we just went on about uh, Whittier, California. I mean, the Quakers. You're reading something. What are you I reading? Is that, oh, it doesn't. Is the Quaker man supposed to be William Penn? You know who he is, right? Uh, Sean Penn's brother? Oh, wait, is it? I was thinking he was the founder of Pennsylvania. Oh, I don't know. William Penn, no. Chris Penn was Sean Penn's brother. <laughs> I think that the... Oh, maybe Pennsylvania was a Quaker. The Pennsylvania guy. Uh, well, probably. And they were cool because they said, like, for every X amount of acres of land, leave X amount of acres oh, like, yeah. untouched. Yeah, that was a cool thing that they did. So that's why there's so much wide open greenery land over there, huh? <clears throat> yeah, William Penn was an English Quaker. There you go. And founding See? of Pennsylvania. I told you, Adrian just always knows this stuff, and then she, she just has to Google it to re to, reaffirm. To actually know. No, but you already knew it. Do you, you want to tell them about what we're doing on Friday? What we'll have been our I'm Friday. going to talk about that with the, oh. with uh, with them, so I, oh, I don't want to okay. talk about it now. Um, do you want to talk about the other concerts we've been to? Because now <laughs> we've been out in the world again. I know. I don't want to date any of the episodes, so we won't say like what time time of the month. But we, our kids did take us to see who was it? Or did we take them? Or did we took them? But I didn't. It's not like um, it was their we concert. We just went with them. We to tagged see along. Cave Town. Cave Town. Uh, Cave Town, Addison Grace, and another person. Well, that was an interesting show. Yeah. It was pretty good, actually. I mean, not. It was fun to go. Our kids yeah. loved it. They, yeah, they loved it. And then it. we also went to see in Chicago. In Chicago, we went to see Godspeed, you Black Emperor. And don't ask Adrian for her opinion of the show. <laughs> actually, you can. It doesn't matter. But I loved it. I had the biggest grin on my face. I, I, I was the first time I've even been to a concert probably in a long time, totally 100% sober, not even a drop, which was interesting. I would have really liked it had it been like at noon <laughs> with some coffee. Because <laughs> it is an instrumental 
uh, show, but oh my god, it was a it was fantastic. I I loved it. I would com- listen kindly enough. I would compare it to being waterboarded. Oh my god. Hopefully, um, Ivan's not listening because I've been wanting to try to get him on the You're show. You're going to cut it out. But no, <laughs> no I'm not it, cut it, it out. was hard because Nothing he was standing right there. And if he just would have sung, it would have, I was well, just like lulling me to sleep. It some, was so hard to stay awake. I kept waking up with my like, well, head on my shoulder like, oh, crap, wake up. So just so people are aware, Godspeed, You Black Emperor is a... a the lead singer of the band Silver Mount Zion, which I love, he sings in that song. There are vocals in that song. In that band, I mean, sorry, in that band. Um, and Godspeed You Black Emperor is a faction of that. It's all the same players in the band. They just are all instrumental. And so you you're saying you wish that he sang. I preferred. I would have been cool to hear him sing, but I just liked all the music. The, they're all fantastic musicians. It was good. I'm just an early bird. Yeah. Well, it was a cool venue, too. Uh, and I'm an early bird, and it's just hard for me to stay up late, especially when you put music like that on, and they're just, like, jamming for, like, 40 minutes at a time. Each song's, like, 40 minutes long. And then I'm like, look at the crowd. Maybe that'll wake you up. And, and then some guy... They're, like, all... S- <laughs> like, like a wave like of people just snake. back and forth then. Like Those, the snake charmer, I'm like, whoa, I'm falling asleep. Oh, here I go. <laughs> some guy like died in the crowd too. And like the ambulance came in the middle of the show and the show just kept going. But I, I've been wanting to see Godspeed, You Back Emperor, for in my entire life. I've never seen him live. So I, I was really happy and I was selfishly thinking if that dude does not get up <laughs> and the show is canceled, I am going to be pissed. I got him out of there. He stood up and started walking, and I watched his eyes roll in the back of his head, and he fell to the ground you again. You could see his eyes. I from totally where could, we yeah, because I was so zoned out, on, zoning in on it, because I really was thinking like this dude's gonna the con- the concert's gonna end because he looked like he died, and then like you hear these like, like there's a crowd of people around and they scream because we sitting up in the balcony, we were sitting in the balcony, but yeah, were, all these people sc- were screaming because <laughs> it looked like I think the dude was like, I don't know what was happening to him. But the ambulance came in, flashlights, they took him out, the ambulance were outside, but the show just kept going. <laughs> so I didn't have to get pissed off. And now we're going to another show. We are. So opposite of that one. Yeah, very but opposite. But also we'll plans. be in the balcony for that one. Thank God, because <laughs> I'm not going to get splooged on by a no. geriatric man. <laughs> um, all right, so listen, uh, the cloaks are progressive, these are my air quotes, <laughs> are progressive hardcore hip-hop, craft hip-hop. Um, their albums are The Cloaks, which is self-titled. Welcome to the 20th century of view from the view. It's not a dark plot. The bit of in a you, a testimony to. If it's said it is true, it's okay to get got. It's only pure thought. It's feasible, believable, so don't get caught. Fucked in a rut and stuck in the mud. Reason to believe in reason. Um, cloak encounters of the third eye. Oh, I'm a giant that eats fireworks. I grab them right out of the sky where the dark clouds lurk. Understand the power of community. Professional amateur. They walk truants. I'm a beast boy. With the license to get iller. Pour cocaine in the brain of Cobain, a young Miller. And a Cloakwork Orange, which is their newest album. We ain't never giving up. The road ahead is tough and paid with no fucks. It takes years of hard work just to earn a solid fuck. It's blood, sweat, and tears. We can't call it all luck. Many trials on this journey. We ain't never giving up. The road ahead is tough and paid with no fucks. Heard these hoes ain't loyal. Wouldn't. And, uh, oh, shit. I That's thought what I... we talked to, um, AWOL one. AWOL one. Yeah. I just keep wanting to call him AC alone. I don't uh, know why I want there's to. There's our. Uh, I, w- I thought I grabbed their newest album. This was their. This oh, was yeah. the last album, not. 2014 or something. Yeah. No, 2016 or 20. No, I don't know. Shoot, I thought I grabbed it. Anyway. Uh, I mean, I do own it. I just. I grabbed the wrong album. But that's the cloaks. And, uh, okay. So, oh. And, it's, and there's no secret of how much of a fan I am of a wall one. You had him on the show. Go watch that episode after you watch this one. Should so, we take a quick break? Oh, no, wait. Are they? Are they oh, yeah, they've been here for a minute. Oh, shit. We can 
Okay, take let's take a break? quick break and then we'll uh, we'll welcome the fellows back in. I had a few things I wanted to talk about, but we'll talk about with uh, We can talk about it after, too. All right. Okay. Are your walls blank and begging to be decorated? Are you tired of having bland art that doesn't reflect how edgy you really are? Well, in this day and age, there's no reason for you to not own artwork that is just as unique as you. At ArtByTie.com, you can find loads of fine art prints and original pieces of artwork done by myself, which the script for this ad describes as a master pen artist. But that's not all. You can also purchase ready-to-hang, limited edition artwork, and while supplies last, you can get our new children's book called Beyond the Sea and my new coffee table book, Book of Arms, 178 pages of tentacle-themed creations. Don't spend another moment looking at boring walls that don't reflect who you are. Go to artbytie.com today. What's good? What's good, everybody? <laughs> How you doing? I was just getting ready to go into this whole thing about... Well, anyway, welcome. Before I do that, welcome to the show, you guys. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have you. I, I don't think there's an official year that the cloaks started, but I'm just guessing. I'm saying 2014. That's when I'm going to say you guys formed because it'll help my facts. <laughs> when, what, when, when, was, when did the cloaks actually, when would you say is the actual formation of the cloaks? What, what, what would you say, Gil? Man, I think, we were ju- I think we just found out we were born in 2014. <laughs> Honestly, oh, no. I think I, that's when the first like official cloak uh, uh, record came out. Yeah, let's go we, with uh, it. We were, we were, I think we were the cloaks. Uh, I think we came up with the name last week, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to, so I wanted to, if it is 2014, we'll go with that. I wanted to uh, real quickly just uh, say a few key things that came out of 214 other than the cloaks. So the number one song at the time was Happy by Pharrell Williams. The top five movies were Guardians of the Galaxy, The Hunger Games, Captain America, The Lego Movie, and Transformers. So I don't know if the, I don't know how that all correlates with the clothes coming out. Probably doesn't. I'm good to all, go but. back. <laughs> uh, and then also this I thought this was crazy in 2014 was uh, the Revolution of Dignity, which was um, the Ukrainian Revolution. That's uh, which focused on the. Crimea and uh, Donbas being recognized as part of Ukraine. That was kind of the start of the, the shit that w- is happening right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's years and years of it, but so I thought that was crazy. Uh, two other things: Malaysia Airlines flight thirteen or three seventy completely Oof. disappeared. They still have oh, no idea what yes. happened to that. that yes, <laughs> man. Wow, that, man. that's right. Um, and that's then on right. da- downside news, that was the year Robin Williams committed suicide, and it was the first sign. Um, the the mass allegations of Bill Cosby, uh, the Bill Cosby. Whoa, yeah. man, you you wrapped up that year pretty <laughs> intensely, man. Yeah. Wow. This will be the way to wrap it up. It's the same year that Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin consciously uncoupled. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's that's when the cloaks formed and why. <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> to restore balance. <laughs> you wonder what's going to happen with the. Uh... Who is that? Who's in the spotlight now? Uh, Johnny Depp and his. Yeah. And... <laughs> oh yeah. I think uh, I think at the end of this, uh, Johnny Depp marries Gwyneth Paltrow, and uh, they move to Ukraine and have a family. Oh shit! <laughs> Sounds good to me. And everything's well, peaceful though. It's a peaceful, peaceful, that's, peaceful. But but uh, that's the next Cloak's release date. What when the Johnny Depp marries Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, and they move to the Ukraine. <laughs> And instead of a candle smelling like her vagina, it'll smell like shit in a bed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. Uh, Yo, thanks for joining us, you guys. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Um, Thank you. You know this. We've we've talked with um, AWOL before. um, So uh, you know that this is all just for for fun. You know, there's nothing. uh, We're not going to squeeze any diamonds out of this, but... um, we're going to have a good time and I'm going to draw you guys something cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this drawing. Um, you, you know, Dude, I'm a big fan of your art, man. Uh, the, the books are super dope. And yeah. Well, big thank time. you. Yeah, man. Stoked to be on the, on the, on the, on the show and hype for the drawing too, man. Well, thank you, but we, you, you may not like it. So no, just kidding. <laughs> hey, Gil, could you tell us about your name? 
Yeah, about Gail and how it came about yeah. or what? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, um, it's just a, a name that I've had since early graffiti days. So, I mean, there's really nothing special than it other than like, you know, coming up with that uh, name based off of like, you know, letters that I liked. I enjoyed doing and styling and it was short so I can get my name up and get away quick. Yeah. You yeah, know? The e, e, e is always the dopest one to, to, to write out. Uh, you like the you like the uh, the composition of how the L ends out? Or were you something else, like Gel One or something? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, all of it, man. I'm I'm very into symmetry, you know, and yeah. and and like so, like if you look at my stuff, I, you'll see the Gs are kind of like the Ls, and the E gets to do whatever it wants to do sometimes, or it's all consistent. But uh, or anything that I do, like any kind of designs or whatever, it's symmetry is really, yeah. Just yeah. I like that type of uh, get down. But yeah, it, it as simple as it sounded, man. It was. Those were the letters I rocked, and I also didn't know anybody with that name. And most importantly, I was like, it ain't going to be gel. It's going to be pronounced gel, and everybody will recognize it as that, and that'll be the differentiator. So, you know, gel one evolved into gel rock with the with the hip-hop thing when I couldn't, you know, be hitting those streets uh, all the time. You know what I mean? You just couldn't be crushing like that, but, you know? Yeah. Still do my thing. I can neither confirm or deny you know, <laughs> it may or may not still be you up on that train. Yeah, yeah. I, otherwise, we just people just do do dope shit out of fanship, you know. Um, hypothetically, are um, were you getting on uh, cars on like train cars? Yeah, man. I that that was that was my favorite thing back in the day, man. Like, um, you know, back in the day, we we uh, were doing a lot of a lot of stuff you know, vandalizing and whatnot, you know, we got busted and learned our lesson and, you know, I've gotten raided and they remember one time they took like two books worth of like pictures, man, of a lot of cars, a lot of dope stuff, man, you know, but there's still remnants out there. They try to get you for that. They, yeah. I once, I did, a, I had a drawing that I did for my cousin. Uh, her name was, <laughs> she was thug as fuck. <laughs> um, she was in this group called the Ragamuffin Sisters, but she was real Sick. thug. So I did, I did a, I did a tag of like her name in a drawing book, and she had it hanging in her mirror. Uh, this uh, was in high, high school. school. In the locker or something? No, in her mirror in her in her room. And this this there's high school cop like went above and beyond. He this dude was an asshole to the to all the way to the top of the A. He 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 went into her house and told her sister that he needed to search her room because she wasn't there. And found, I don't know what he was searching the room for, but he found that my drawing, and I had just did that piece on a wall <laughs> in oh, the same yeah. city. <laughs> but he fucking called me into the office, and he tried to tell me he was gonna get a, a fucking a script, you know, a handwriting person detective to, like, oh, to, shit. to like uh, to like match the, my drawing to the fucking spray can. I was like, how are you gonna? What you're out of and your what mind? What year was this? <laughs> Oh God! Um, this is like ninety three. <laughs> Dude, and now and now and now they've got like technology and shit. They're like, you know, they just yeah. And, you were, and this dude was gonna hire like a in private investigator, like the, called the private investigator well, department. How is it? How is it? Like my handwriting and my fucking can't my rattle can throw is not gonna match up. I don't care. <laughs> but also, does it really even matter anymore? No. Like now, the trains are just getting robbed of amazon packages and no one seems to even care yeah that's crazy right we live in this small town uh our my gallery's in the small town here in hannibal missouri but there's this dude here who, uh he's like just lived here his whole life but he has a an instagram account i probably shouldn't share it, but all he does the, the whole account are trains that pass through this town and he's got every and it's all all big pieces he's got everybody from like <laughs> 70s 80s 90s all that came through this yard or through through hannibal it's it's a pretty awesome account but i don't know if i should share that uh, publicly i mean the name of the account but uh yeah message, message it to me man yeah i'm probably following already yeah he's he's a pretty he's a he's an interesting cat too um oh and real quick before i start drawing thanks uh for sending that beer over uh hey well that was dope 
The glasses, coasters. That glass and coasters. Nice. Yep. Stuff. Nice. That beer was dope. Are, is that is that? Are yeah. they still canning that, or are they still making it, or is it done? Um, well, they had uh, when they um, brewed them up. Uh, we we sold out in about a week, and uh, so everybody's pretty happy with the project, and it went well. So, you know, in in the near future, we're gonna do another one. You know, maybe it'll be like another variation of something, but uh, but yeah, for now, it's it's uh, it's sold out. So. Yeah, even I, I wish I had one. You know, I'm, I still drink out of the glass, but I just drink shitty beer out of a cool glass. So. <laughs> yeah, I drink. Uh, I drink mine on New Year's on New Year's Eve. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, that's refreshing. Now I'm drinking this uh, this this wine, this bottle of wine. But I like I got, the piece on yeah, it. intrinsic. Oh, yeah. Dope. Dope. intrinsic. Dope, yeah, man. that's that's actually a good a good a good bottle, man. Remember, Tony, I was telling you. Like I was telling AWOL that, you know, I pick my wines based on the labels because if people are serious about their craft, they they take that art serious, that label, just like you just like our records. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So like if if you put, you know, you I imagine people when they got a good uh, you know, a good wine, a, a good beer, craft beer that they, you know, they do their labels up, right? They want it to be repped. Otherwise, yeah. why would you pay all that money or what does it say about me? Yeah, well, <laughs> <right. she's> <laughs> my five dollar bottle of wine with a twist off. off hey, much respect. Gel Rock's rocking a black tea. You know what I'm saying? No label. <laughs> you know, I feel yeah. you. That's a dope. That's a dope hoodie, by the way, man. The, yeah, yeah, man. Bill Earth. They're they're actually gonna come out with a coffee. It'll be in all the stores, and the the label is the same as the with the, the yeah. It's, I mean, I I I specifically wore it because I had you guys on because wait. Dope. Sorry, I'm out of the loop. But is this you guys? Um, it's a guy that we work with. Um, they're called Brim Fitted, and uh, like you know, he did our like our hats. Yeah. He he, did, he does a lot of dope, uh, like streetwear and stuff. So um, he's venturing into the coffee business, but it's like aliens built earth, um, like cold brew, and then you know, like a like a dark roast, like a French roast. So yeah, and then uh, eventually you were doing a walrus cold brew. Oh, so, awesome! But that's like probably not not till like November and December. Yeah, they're dope, man. I, I he he hit me up and said I'll, he's gonna he was gonna send me over some hats. I told him I was gonna order some other ones, but there are some hats that I, there's no way I could wear them. Like some of that style is <laughs> so is way too flash for me. I don't think I could ever yeah, rock any yeah, of those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he has some dope shit, but. Yeah, some of it is as wild. A lot of styles, a lot of different styles. They're like runway, you know, wear fashion week. Yeah, some shit my kids could probably wear. Yeah, I'm supposed to. Yeah. I'm, he's. I'm supposed to hit back up with him. All right. Well, so uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna get going on the drawing here. I'm gonna attempt to draw um, Gelrock's dog. What's your dog's name, by the way? And and what kind what of dog? What is my is dog's it? name? El Chapo. El Chapo, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a yeah. mastiff, or what? Or, or, yeah, he's a he's an Italian mastiff, Cane Corso. Yeah, he's good looking. His paws oh. are like this big, like one paw. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually tell you guys something about paws a little bit later uh, in the show. <clears throat> um, do you, uh, Gelrock? Do you have any other pets? No, nah, man. He's a, he's enough, man. 185 pound killer. What about you, Tony? You got pets? Uh, yeah, uh, right now I have one dog. His name's Bougie Bantan. Yeah, <laughs> Bougie Bantan, but, he, but he's Bougie, uh, Bougie Magouge. Uh, he probably has like six names or something. Is he a Pomeranian? Um, he's like a, uh, he, he's like a cockapoo kind of mix. Yeah, he was a rescue. We got him like two years ago, and then it, it took him like maybe six, eight months to warm up. But uh, now he's like, he's he's on the routine and he's good. Yeah, so um, if, if I hear him tapping by, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll put him in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys, do either, do you guys speak regular to your, to your uh, dogs or do you use like a baby-like voice or, <laughs> or some other kind of voice? Uh, I think for the most part, I use a regular voice. I just have these uh, weird words I use with only the dog. I don't know why. Yeah, I use like a... An 
old lady voice and talk to them all weird. <laughs> no, no, I just use my regular voice. Now. <laughs> yeah, I would think with your Mastiff, you have to kind of be a commander voice. Yeah, that that's sort of my natural tone as well. You know what I mean? It kind of it's fits it's it's fitting for me. You know. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start this timer. Um, um, uh, all right, so the timer is set, and we were just speaking of pets. I, I was gonna ask about pet peeves because I my I have one, and it's when shitty when good musicians make shitty music because I can't really play an instrument. So it's fucking ultimately frustrating when I hear musicians who can play an instrument, yet they choose to play shitty music with that talent. Uh, so or what was your main pet peeve? Man, my main pet peeve is, um, is fucking unorganized. Anything that's unorganized, man. I have to make sense of everything. It's it's not, it's just that's my fucking pet peeve. Anything that's unorganized. So like even even unorganized chaos still needs some some order. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's even if that's what I fucking juggle, that's what I do. Do you have control issues? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean it's not it's not uh you know, I'm self aware, right? So it's not like a burden or anything of that nature, but I think it's a I, I use it to be productive put it that way so yeah. it's never like you know over overreaching what about you a while you what's your uh what is your what are your pet peeve or what's a pet peeve of yours uh, um man. maybe somebody that is constantly complaining about mm -hmm. shit it just drives me crazy yeah i mean we we all have reasons to complain but people there's some people they're just it's that's all that fucking drips out of their gums, you know? Gum drippers, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know. Good visual. Yeah, at least at least balance it out with some good shit. So dumb yeah. gum drippers. Dumb <laughs> dumb gum drippers. Stupid man. <laughs> Since you're a rock, uh, for some reason what came to mind was um was uh bebop bebop and rocksteady of the ninja turtles so <laughs> uh bebop is the walrus and rocksteady is it's, uh, it's chapo, chapo. <laughs> sick dude that shit is hard yeah. <laughs> and then i originally when chop, i was chop. sketching it out they were they were they had like their ray guns but i actually remember you're both uh, uh graffiti artists so i put rattle cans in their hands so so uh, Bebop is a warthog, you know, and I was thinking that this this was kind of the symmetry was kind of cool or not symmetry, but that his tusks are going the opposite way than what uh, the, kind of the I don't it doesn't mean anything, but <laughs> no, I was a young warthog. I was a young warthog. Did your Mastiff have the jowls, like the droopy droopy jowls. Yeah, uh, yeah, but not. They're not like a typical mastiff, you know, like I think um, he's, 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 he's a handsome devil. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't droop too much. He's kind of, he's a good looker. Like, yeah. Like his owner. Kane Corso. Yeah. Kane Corso. What, were you guys Ninja Turtle fans at all? I mean, I guess that's. Yeah, for sure, man. I have the old Eastman and Laird fucking black and white TMNT. I, I hung out to those forever, man. And that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have them no more, but... I was too, but I was more of a fan of April. Was that her name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah April O'Neil. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go, man. And I always liked the, I always liked the character uh, Casey Jones for some reason. I liked yeah, he was oh, dope. Yeah, he was dope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was dope. He carried his hockey, hockey stick too. around. Yeah. I think yeah. he was good because he likes kind of laid back in the, in the shadows a little bit, and he wasn't right. like, trying to be the star. Well, yeah. it, when the right. movie, when he? the first movie came out, he was a bit of an ass. But <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, the movie did not change them up. I think in the cartoon he was kind of chill. And I always wish like April O'Neil would meet like um, Scarlet from GI Joe, and then they would <laughs> hang out with Baroness, and then they would just you know chill out for an evening. You know? <laughs> that was my thing when I was a kid. Those were the three like cartoon. Like crush, crush girls yeah. as, a, as a young Tony. 
what about you, uh, Gail? Did you what cartoon character were you crushing on? Well, I dropped the first hint with April O'Neil, uh, yeah. but Tony just kind of rounded it out. I mean, that was the generation right there, you know. And then Wonder Woman. I don't know if she counts, but but you, you are you talking about it. the cartoon Wonder Woman, right? I'm talking about any damn Wonder Woman at this point. <laughs> Wonder Woman, the cartoon Wonder Woman. I forgot her name. What was the old actress? Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Yeah. Dude, I, I Carter. For only one little like semester, I went to auto shop, and my my stupid auto shop teacher, every day he would mention Linda Carter. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, if Linda Carter was my wife, or like if Linda Carter was a president, it's just like, dang, he must <laughs> love one. They of actually <laughs> made the cartoon after her at some point, right? Oh, I think they did. They like changed up some features. And- yeah. And what, yeah. what I think is cool is there's so many versions of like one thing. Like there's all these different artist takes on like one character, you know. Like have you guys seen that that Bob's Burger? There's an episode where like eight different artists do one episode. Have you guys seen that episode? I I, I my kids have been have been binge watching Bob's Burgers. I I never saw it before then. But so I don't know the episode. Well, you, you you should at least watch this one episode because like all these different artists touch the, the you know the, the same sets so the, the the same characters yeah but all in their take within like you know one episode so it keeps switching styles yeah that's awesome yeah you guys need to check yeah, that I will one for out. sure yeah I liked it. I like the show I love that my kids are into into that shit too for some reason <laughs> it's it's a, it's mellow it's not like you know wild and like a lot of shit nowadays they're just throwing words at you and sounds and yeah. everything's so busy and fast and you know it's it's a little slower it's easy to digest you know the movie looks pretty funny what's that yeah yeah the movie there's a movie coming out oh it looks pretty yeah. funny actually i haven't seen the show i'm familiar with the characters but i went to the movies uh recently and saw the previews for it and looked pretty funny yeah, it's a uh, funny show, man. It's I like the writing. It's clever writing. It's that same kind of writing. My my kids like that Gravity Falls too. I mean, the, my kids are late teenagers too, but it's that same kind of I don't know what yeah. what you call that, but it's 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 funny. I like that writing. Uh, let's do some uh let's do some Sophie's Choice questions. Awal brought it up the last time we were talking to him, but I said maybe I'll use it in the future. Uh, so we'll just start with you real quick, Tony, the the this the Sophie's Choice. Uh, Merle Haggard or Merle Streep? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going Merle Haggard. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Young Merle, as we used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go based off of your based off of like a, a play on words with your names. So we'll start with you, Gail Rock, uh, Kid Rock or J Rock? J Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I don't even, I, that was, thank you. I appreciate that layup. <laughs> I was all nervous. Like, oh, shit. What, what kind of going? Tony Hawk or Tony Danza? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go with Tony Hawk, man. All right. Yeah. He's, Word. he's, uh, he's a lot doper than Tony Danza. <laughs> Tony Danza is pretty dope, though. <laughs> Tony Danza is really dope, actually. I used to think that one song um, is like uh, Elton John. The it, it, sound, it used to sound like "Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza," <laughs> and I didn't know what it was for a long ass time. And it's Tiny Dancer. Tiny Dancer. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that when you were singing, I was like, yeah, that's what, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, you know, uh, that, that just goes in the files of those song lyrics that you can't decipher, you know? <laughs> so Gail Sayers or Gail King? <laughs> Damn. Uh, uh, Gail Sayers, easily, but, yeah. you know. Were you, are you a football fan? Were you an NFL fan? Yeah, but I've always been an Oakland Raider fan, and you know I know that Gale Sayers played played for the Bears, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running back for the Bears, yeah. Yeah, I, he was I, dope, I, though. Yeah, I was just all about talent, and I love the running back position. I know Gale Sayers, and you know Barry Sanders, all those old school heads, you know. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch a Gale Sayers uh, highlight reel before before a game every 
every game I loved him. Him and him and uh, Walter Payton. I loved both of those guys. So you were um, a Bears fan then? Uh, yeah, I was a, but I'm a talent fan. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 I hate the Lakers, but I fucking love. I loved Kobe Bryant, and I loved. Uh, Word up. And I love uh, LeBron James, and but I want to hate them so much. <laughs> Man, I like Jason Tatum on the Celtics, and I can't even believe I'm saying that. So yeah. <laughs> what about Tony Montana or Antonio Banderas? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh... I'm probably more like Zorro than a drug kingpin. Zorro? That, that's your choice? No Desperado? <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm going to lean towards Desperado. I thought you were going to say Tony Danza with a bandana. <laughs> <laughs> Just a real, yeah, all the way down <laughs> to the bridge of the nose. <laughs> Dude, he, he should he should make those Tony Danza bandanas. <laughs> so Dude, I'm, a, I'm a fan, man. Already Tony Danza bandanas. Yeah, Bandanza, Tony Bandanza. <laughs> New- <laughs> <Straight. Fuck. laughs> that Adrian, I stole that from oh, you. Dude. You just didn't yeah. say it loud enough. Killed it. <laughs> Killed it. Uh, and then finally, um, The Rock or Chris Rock? Oh man, <laughs> shit. I'm 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 gonna go with The Rock, but I I could I could I could have uh, went easily Chris Rock. Uh, yeah, but how about? How about if it was The Rock that slapped Chris Rock? <laughs> I, I, I swear that crossed my mind. As, as I don't know why you threw those two names at. I thought about Chris Rock getting slapped, and if I was on the other end, I was like, I, I'll go with The Rock. I don't think you can fuck with The Rock. <laughs> yeah, Chris Rock's head would have flown across the fucking stage. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were at a Ripley's just uh, like a month ago. Yeah, in Texas. And they had like a life-size version of The Rock, Wax Guy. And The Rock oh, the was rock. like yeah. huge. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. no, he's big, but hitting standing next to him i'm like oh my gosh yeah he's all the way big dude have you guys seen the the young rock that tv show i haven't watched it yet but i heard it's really good basically i mean it is about the rock but it's more about um like 80s wrestling yeah yeah i I, I heard it's pretty good yeah this shit is dope dude so dope his family's like deep 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 wrestle like andre the giant is like babysitting him and like it just, it, it's it's good. It's good. It's funny. Andre the Giants was such is was like just the baddest ass person on the planet. Dude, yeah. you drink like twenty five beers in a city. Yeah. I'm like he, Jesus. He, yeah. Uh, he, there's a there's a photograph of Andre the Giant and Wilt Chamberlain holding up Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Arnold and oh, Arnold God. looks like a little tiny little like <laughs> troll. Oh, <laughs> it's God, fucking awesome. Man. Damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll forward you that picture. It's so dope. I'm not. And Tony dances in the back like <laughs> Tony's, Tony's hanging from Arnold's shoelaces. I, I was going to say, I'm not like huge on nostalgia, but there, there was something about the wrestling in the 80s that was just like you had to be there. It will never be. I don't think it will ever be like that again. No. Like when yeah. my stepdad had that on and like, what was it? Sunday mornings. And I just wanted to die. Well, he was. He was. <laughs> Those are the classic dudes. The classics. Yeah. Yeah. It was a. It was a thing. It was a generational thing, right? Yeah. It was. It was bigger yeah. than just wrestling. It was. Yeah. Well, Rock's dad. He wrestled in the first WrestleMania. Who did? Yo, Rock's dad. Yeah. Yo, yeah, oh, no, like, that's what I thought he was saying yeah. at first. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, no, I was a fan of uh, of uh, Chris. No, what the fuck? I want to call him Chris Rock. Jane. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Rocky Johnson. Rocky, yeah, Rocky Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would think that this it would have been from his Samoan side, but nope. Right. Yeah, but like his grandma from the Samoa side, she was like a promoter, and then like the uncles were like yeah. the family you know, business, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a straight family business, man. It, it's super dope. It's like a, a like the 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 wrestling network is almost akin to like the circus network, you know, like the whole sure. traveling. Or or rapping hip hop or fucking comedians yeah. any like small group of community that tours together and creates together. Yeah, it's the same shit, man. Yeah, like they, Road they, they work a lot. Oh, I was you know what I was gonna I really quickly I'm I'm getting I get sidetracked so easily, but I was gonna ask because we, we it came up. Did you guys because you guys are in Los Angeles? Did you ever fuck around with um with Booyah Tribe or know anyone from Booyah Tribe? I didn't, but this this dude we knew, Rick Rock, he, he this cat, uh, he was throwing a show, 
And it was like in this gritty, gritty part of town. And I went there by myself and, and the fucking Booyah tribe was getting tattooed at the show. It was like in this little ass room. And that's the same night I met Exhibit. And uh, so the, the Booyah tribe, I always kind of like, anytime somebody brings that up, I just remember this like weird night. Yeah. They're fucking hardcore. <laughs> but they were yeah. like, I think they're from like Carson and shit. Cause there's a yeah. lot of, uh, a lot of yeah cats like that from, they're all in that area. Yeah. yeah. I uh, only knew their lore growing up. Not, not yeah. didn't know any of the members though. Yeah, there's some heavy dudes, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like everything, like mentally, physically, uh, on the street, like, uh, they, they just had a vibe to them, man. Yeah, it's scary. And still, like, they're all way old and still fucking scary to me. <laughs> uh, since I was talking about the 2014 thing, I also um, wanted to say... Another thing that came out of 2014 was the dumb Starbucks. That was in Los Angeles. That came out in February 2014. Do you guys ever, do you know what that dumb Starbucks was? It came out. It was like a fake uh, Starbucks that they opened in Los Angeles. But if you've never been there, it doesn't matter because I was wondering if you, if you even know what it was. Well, I know that, but that was a big deal. It was because they had the Starbucks logo and they were making fun of, Starbucks and some shit. It was a big. It was a big deal, but it doesn't. Oh, so they like they, on purpose. They did like a satire. And, yes, and yeah. it was called Dumb oh, Starbucks, shit, and Starbucks okay. tried to sue them, and it was a whole thing. Uh, and then we talked about uh, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris uh, Chris Martin thing uh, with the uncoupling. But I don't suppose that um, the cloaks will ever suffer a conscious uncoupling, huh? No, I mean, there was one time where uh, Gwyneth Paltrow joke, got on stage and tried to slap Gil Rock, and uh, that was kind of awkward. But uh, I think um, at that point, um, Dave Chappelle came in and just uh, said a couple of, like, a couple Gil Rock rap bars. <laughs> well, I haven't even seen that footage, but I, but I did hear that someone got up and attacked fucking Dave Chappelle, too. Yeah, that shit. That. That shit was crazy too, man. But yeah, that, uh, yeah, I'm fucking. Yeah, and then Chris Rock jumps on stage and says, Was that Will Smith? <laughs> he did. I was like, Damn, what a joke. Well, uh, I, so I'm not, I'm not trying to be crude or anything, but have any of you had a chance to smell uh, Gwyneth's vagina via her candle? <laughs> no, uh, I thought that was a joke. That's... <laughs> I've only smelled. Um, vagina via scented fragrances from um <laughs> singers not actresses well <laughs> i i when it first came out i always wanted to get it so it's but it's always been sold out so i legit ordered one today a mini oh a mini two oh, two, really? ounce, wow, that's two ounce this candle smells like my vagina i ordered it this morning which made me want to uh, uh, bring is that it what it's called? It's yeah. That's the candle's called. This smells like my vagina. But um, <laughs> but wow. I don't. But I'm I'm sure it's right out of the bath, not like clubbing all night. <laughs> I bought the mini version of uh, Bet Midler. This is uh, Bet Midler's. This smells like my armpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and th- th- those sold out too. <laughs> Yeah, it was straight it was straight off the set of Hocus Pocus. Danny DeVito divorce deodorant. Yeah, that's going to be the next candle, the divorce candle. No, well, I mean, that was 2014. <laughs> no, I mean, for you. Oh, mine. If you're ordering Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle. No, because it was just... It's like, this is the first funny. I've heard of this. <laughs> no, but did, did, didn't Erica Badu do that already? That's right. She probably did. She did. That's what I was... Well, Erica I don't know Bobby. who no, came no, up no. with that first. She's got an incense. Oh, yeah, that's why I was. Yeah, yeah. she has an incense, right? I was gonna. I was bringing up that the uh, this this candle smells like my vagina because I think it's a kind of a brilliant um, marketing thing. I, I I think names of shit is 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 always awesome, and so that's why I wanted to bring that up because I love the name uh, the names of your guys' albums. Well, I love a Cloakwork Orange, and I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, fucking. 
<laughs> that was dope. <laughs> All right. I, I, I do love Pose and counter, cloak encounters of the third eye. God damn it. <laughs> Sick. Rangers yeah. of the Lost Cloak. Uh, so with those, let's, how about, uh, let's do um, a couple of Sophie's choices. A Clockwork Orange or a 2001 Space Odyssey? I'm going to go Clockwork Orange. No Clockwork Orange, no Clockwork Orange. So that was my rationale. True. Yeah, true. Um, It's just as I revisited, remember how we were talking, Gil? Like, yeah. As we revisited the movie, yeah, it's the, not... the imagery might not, you know, be exactly what we're aiming for. <laughs> I think we were more aiming for, like, just kind of like the vibe and, you know, the you know the, the the play on words and just like you know the art the art of the whole thing you know the, yeah that the, movie is violent as fuck but it's a damn good movie yeah it's, cla- it's classic for sure yeah. just, just yeah. like a record yeah the next the next record is cloak odyssey 2023 yeah that you're just you're just saying that right now. <laughs> but we are we are gonna have to entertain the next iteration which it needs to fit like you know, just like these other ones do. Yeah, I, I like that. I think it's a, I think it's a cool, uh, yeah, I, what do you call that? Like a theme, maybe? I was trying cool to concept. think of a bunch today. And I was like. It's tough, right? <laughs> it's tough. That's why yeah. when, when the winning one comes up, you message us, dude. Because, yeah, like, okay. I've been thinking about it. Like, if, you know. I even cheated. Like, I even Googled uh, movies that start with C-L-O. Oh, damn. Uh, a whole bunch came up, but, like. Like the closer, but I was like, that won't, you know, like the cloakser, like not, yeah. they just, none of it, nothing was ringing, nothing was working. So, but I will, I'll keep fucking around with it. That's, I, that's I, why I, these ones were the album titles because they fit perfectly. It just made sense and kind of went with the vibe of what we were trying to do. And, you know, uh, I think, you know, Clockwork Orange, Clockwork Orange, rather, the movie is, you know, very abstract and, you know, it's just got its own sort of vibe to it. Um, and it's just hella unique. And, yeah, and that's yeah, what you guys are. Yeah. So, you know, think kind of from that perspective. And then, you know, cloak encounters of the third eye, you know, just just it's too dope not to use. You know what I mean? And that's, yep. And check yeah, this out. One. This just came in. These are going to be shipped. Oh. It is. Yeah, because I was looking, I was going through my vinyl and I'm like, fuck, I know I, I know I have that thing on order. Why can't I find it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, they just haven't gone out yet. Yeah, no, it, it literally just came in yesterday. Oh fuck yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, what? Based off of your your guys' track, fifty two card pickup. Battle, battle, throttle for cattle cross auto. Planes, trains, and bottles. False flags and follows. They fight with it, what's right with it, what time is it when the night begins? Caffeine, dream, split scenes, I heard him scream. Entitlement, environment, he's fucking with my retirement. Say grab and grab and handle, then baffle, brag and shackle. I gotta ask you, are cards best for magic or poker? Magic. Magic. Um, yeah. yeah, totally. I fucking love magic. Yeah. Like, like not, not like tarot magic, but like... No, yeah. Like, yeah, like... Sleight of hands shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, I love magic. I I just, I love, I love that cards can be so meaningful, though, right? Mm. Like, that they can come with so much, uh, you know, mystique, if you will, because, like, you know, cards are used for different things, or you can even sleight of hand tricks, like, all of it, because even the magic tricks with cards is cool poker is just one element of the cards right yeah it's 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 a game amongst games with cards and cards hold all that sort of like uh you know i don't know it's 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 a i dig it i dig cards yeah cards are fucking really cool i, I love thumbing through i love even just shuffling cards i, I love shuffle them. cards like i have like i i've started to like take a liking to um you know, having an interest in, in unique sets of cards with dope art. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah. Do you like to collect shit? Yeah. So that's, yeah. Another like collection. collection huh? so, yeah. Well, they are really 
great actually um as you were saying that i was thinking of like that old like if you got stuck on the desert island Cards well, would be real. I mean, if you're in prison or something, a deck of cards could be <coughs> like Fuck yeah. your everything. Yeah. Right? I used to love yeah. playing, uh, like, remember the game yeah. Pyramid? Uh, oh, where you just stack them? No, it's, uh, <laughs> oh. no, no, it's, it's, uh, the, it's the game that's on the computers, right? No, oh. no, I play with real cards. No, I, um, what do you call the card game that you play by yourself? Solitaire. 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 It's, it's a, like it's that, a form right? of solitaire. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You oh. build the card and everything, everything has to do with 13, I believe. It's been a long time since I've played it. But you basically build a pyramid and you flip the cards like in a game of memory to get 13 and that knocks down a pair of cards and it reveals the next card in the pyramid and you try to get to the top of the pyramid. It's a dope game. That's the first I heard of that. And when I was a kid, I used to play all kinds of card games because I would always be at the laundromat with moms doing laundry, you know what I'm saying? Running okay. around, playing cards. and The original iPhone. You know, yep. Yeah, and so I'm always play a game called Sweepy, man. I fucking love Sweepy. And then yeah, hearts, hearts and spades. I love. Oh man, yeah. No one plays cards anymore. You know what's crazy is, I I've I've never been good at poker. I don't or, or I just don't I don't like gambling because um I because usually I associate gambling. Well, I just I just I drink right. So when I drink, I get yeah. to a certain point where I really don't give a shit. I just yeah. start having fun. And so if there's money on the table, I'm not going to care. And I don't want to be in that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I really don't gamble a lot. But somebody recently uh, invited me and my girl to a, a, a poker tournament like a couple weeks ago, like maybe four weeks ago or something. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, we'll go. We'll play, you know, I'll just drop 20 bucks or something. And, you know, we walked in the backyard of this place and there was just full on poker tables. It was super oh, serious, shit. organized. <laughs> The dude had like a whistle and like everything was timed. I was like, dude, I'm over my head right now. I don't know what's going on. So we sat at one table and like they were trying to remind me how to play. So on. So long story short, after like process of elimination, all the final four people ended up at our table. And by that time I was super buzzed and I had like a gang of chips and I ended up just playing. I didn't, I wasn't playing the game. I was playing everybody at the table. Yeah. And that was all I was reading. And I was had, had everybody like kind of just entertained with me bullshitting and making everyone laugh, you know, not being serious and breaking through everybody else's strategy and seriousness. Yeah. And ended up taking the pot, you know, I had oh, to split shit. it. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, I, I split it with one dude who would like, he, we just weren't going to lose. And he was super intense. And I would just kind of just playfully buzz, just not taking anything serious. And it just got to the point where everybody in the room knew. We weren't going to win each other, and so we just agreed to split the pot. I split but I walked pot, out winning. Man. Yeah, I, I, I just like the camaraderie. I like playing poker. I don't care much for gamble, but yeah, I'm just hanging. And, but it's always dope when you win. Well, it was, dude. I was totally. That was my whole goal. Was like, you know what? I'm just going to have fun tonight. It was a cool vibe, you know. And we were making our our table like the liveliest, and then yeah, it turned out cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> the cards. Well, when we, whenever we're uh, out your guys' way, fucking hopefully we can uh, we can uh, hook up and play some cards or some shit. I got cards <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I've been trying to. I've been trying to. Anytime anyone that's on the show, like anytime I can get anywhere, if they're gonna be, I'm I'm there. Like we're going to see uh, uh, Chesky and DJ Abilities in Utah. We're driving fucking Let's all go. the way from Pittsburgh. To Utah, just so just so you can hang with them for that night of the show. That's tight. Well, that's I mean, tight. we would be there like a day later. Two days we're later, gonna... we're just leaving a little earlier. Yeah, earlier. just for that, because fuck, you know what the hell's the point of of being around and spending this time with people if we're if you know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, no, it's, it's like you know, like the part of the message that we do, like in the clothes show, we always say something like, you know, here's what you cannot get on the internet. You know, it's human touch. You know, we'll, you know, we'll shake some people's hands or, you know, interact with some cats and give some hugs. Because um, the human, the human to human interaction is super important. And I know as, as reclusive as we all are at times, um, there is always just, just this little need to, you know, interact with other human beings, man. Yeah. You know, there's some kind of energy we get from it or I don't know what it is, but 
It's goes, almost like it's almost needed. It's, it's even it, more fun with like-minded individuals too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Well, that's 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 magic, man. Like you know, uh, that connective, you know, energy um, creates a lot of magic, man. If whether it's you know big show, small show, intimate setting, um, you know, those are the things that you're gonna remember as like you know that's why you're going to the show you know what i mean that's why you're making that drive right it's like right yes it's gonna be it's gonna be it'll be it'll be a touch of magic for sure man you know what i mean like you're gonna that experience cannot replace you know watching it live on instagram or something you know no, not at all And you're right about the touch thing and um reese just the other day he put on lean on me for the the kids to watch Uh, we watched that as a family and just well, earlier that day, we had a visitor into the gallery from Kansas City, and I was kind of entertaining their three-year-old little girl, and I was, I caught myself, like, touching her head, you know, and, like, guiding her with my hand, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, we're not supposed to touch people anymore. Oh, but then you got uncomfortable when you were doing that? I was that? like, oh, <laughs> crap, I hope, like, I'm not doing something, but it's just, like, natural. I'm a mom, you know, this is a little kid, I'm going to entertain yeah. this child and, like, guide her. Yeah, there was but this no, motherly... It's not, uh, it's not it's... my kid, but then I'm watching Lean on Me with these guys and seeing how hands-on we used to be and how hands-off person-to-person we are now is really pretty sad yeah you, you didn't let the toddler fall did you i did not <laughs> no. No. never on my watch hey i've always wanted to ask somebody this question um if you were trapped in a loop what day of the week would you prefer that loop to be on sunday oh shit sunday's a good day because it's a but you know what i mean i don't want to be yeah. trapped on a on a stressful day I'd rather just be on loop on a chill day. Bottom you know? most of the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bloody Sundays, you know what I mean? Whatever, man. Yeah, and I guess you'd never have a hangover because you're just the loop. So you could just, you're just constantly in chill mode, dude. You know? And just fucking Bill Murray that shit, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what, about, what about you, Tony? Oh, I'll be stuck in Sunday with the rocks term, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cloak cycle, dude. Yeah, that's Cloak right. Cycle. If you're if you're in a I I wonder this. If you're in a trapped in a loop and it's with somebody like so if we were in Gail if we were in, right today we're in Gail's loop, we don't wake up tomorrow and that's your <sighs> loop, right? But we're always <clears throat> in that loop oh, we don't fucking oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's not I don't get a I don't remember all every one of oh. those days. Huh. Right. So it depends on whose loop it is. Is the one that remembers. Yeah, cause I, cause it's your loop. Huh. Well, fuck. I don't huh. know. I guess we'll, we'll we'll not figure that one out on in a, on a forty five minute drawing session. But uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, check in every day, like at five fifty, for this uh, Zoom meeting, <laughs> and see if we're if you were stuck yeah, in a every, loop every fucking day. Sunday. <laughs> Today was Friday, Sunday. Five a.m. <laughs> I'm just. It's me, um, dude. Me. What if you're stuck in a blooper? Into your, into your computer door. <laughs> you, know, you just keep. Well, you know what? Speaking of being trapped, like stuck or trapped, uh, if I'm, uh, I'll tell you this quick story, if you don't mind. Um, Please do. I we were at a show in in, in Fort Worth, Texas, a couple weeks ago, and um, we were loading up the van, and the van was far away from where the where the show was. So my wife was over at the show, and I left my phone over there, and I went to go load some shit into the back of the van. Well, the back of the van, we have a bul- <laughs> we have a <laughs> we have a bulkhead in the because in, I have a big sprinter, you know, and there's a bulkhead, and there's no doors except for the back doors, no windows, nothing. Well, I was in the back of the van, and it was a windy fucking day, so I had the doors propped open, and I was just loading up some stuff in the back of the van. Well, our doors broke from inside. The, the handle's broken. So the fucking wind blows the doors closed. And immediately when they fucking shut, I knew, like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I find, I, I have my, my, I have a, oh, we have a light inside because I didn't have my phone or other. I would have just called my wife. But I fucking got a screwdriver. I'm fucking stabbing at the door. I'm trying to get the fucking thing I open. I, I mean, it's hot as fucking balls. And I'm kicking the door. And I, I, 
I, I fucking thought I was going to die in the van. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. So fortunately it was at a show, so there was enough people out and about, but I was fucking kicking the doors screaming. I was like, Hello, anybody out there? And this fucking lady and her kids, she like opens up the door and I burst out of the door and she's like, What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> oh, but I, I told her I was like, I'm sorry. I just I've been <laughs> locked in that fucking thing. But yeah, anyway. It was funny because like, like before that happened. Two hours before. I was I thought he hasn't come back in a while. I wonder if he got oh. locked in the van. <laughs> and then he oh, just like man. laughed when I said that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no because way. Because he didn't know. I guess he didn't realize it was actually broken. <laughs> yeah, because my daughter got yeah. stuck in there once when we were camping and she was crying. And I was like, why didn't you just fucking open the door? I didn't realize it was broken. Anyway, I got to fix that. So Again, yeah, I think that's a common plot of a lot of children's sitcoms. Get somebody trapped. gets stuck somewhere. Yeah, like a rich yeah, like, They get stuck and then they, they can't down by the river. play. Did you ever remember the Punky Brewster episode where the kid got stuck in the refrigerator out on the street? <laughs> Dude, no, but you just called out another childhood crush. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Soleil Moonfry for sure. Yeah, that was a real Shit. serious episode. In fact, at the beginning, I remember it. At the beginning of the episode, they like put a, a warning sign or it was PSA. like a, T, a a PSA kind of thing. Like don't climb oh, in yeah. refrigerators. Cause I guess Whoa. that would be a thing back in the day. People just put their refrigerators outside. Yes. Because there, there was a law. Like if you put your refrigerator out to get taken by the, you know, the sanitation department or whatever, you have to, you have to take off the handles you have to take off the weather yeah. stripping or else they'll find you. I, I, yeah. That, and that, that's been a law for a minute. Yeah, because someone and was I think trapped it's all in there, right? of the Punky Brewster episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Punky, Punky, Punky Brewster made some change, change well, government. I'll tell you, they don't make things like they used to because every time I go downstairs, our refrigerator is open. That's like, right. That shit doesn't just stay shut anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, I saw a headline the other day that said uh, Kendrick Lamar is back to save hip hop. How do you guys feel about comments like that? Uh, I mean, Kendrick is dope. Yeah. But, I mean, it's everyone's opinion if if kendrick is their savior that's cool i mean he's a, yeah you know that's good yeah. for them yeah he's dope but i don't know it's it's like a weird like what who said hip-hop needed to be saved <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah I, I don't i don't even think yeah i, I don't know uh i mean it, who's know. to save any fucking thing from anything I, I i heard the i heard the album and I thought it was really, really dope. And I yes. really dig Kendrick. I really, really do. He's super, super, super dope. And I'm yeah. really happy he represents the West. Yes. So don't yeah, get it yeah. twisted. But I didn't, the, the thought of saving hip hop did not come to mind. In fact, quite the opposite, I would say. I was on the same day bumping the new AC alone. Uh, so, yeah. you know what I mean? If you want to talk about saviors of hip hop, and underground saviors of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's that's the universe that I subscribe to. But at the same time, I'm a, I'm a Kendrick fan, so yeah. But that's what I mean. I I am too. And I but I see that comment. I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't. I saw it was a, like a. I mean, it doesn't matter. It was just a headline, but still, yeah. I don't know, that shit. I don't know. <laughs> I have a little little something to say on this. When I was listening to your guys' new album today, it started off with the 52 card pickup. Is that right? It's, uh, yeah. Is it? yeah, there's just the intro or something in the yeah, beginning, but yeah. But it had all that scratching. Which just I feel like you just don't hear it. A whole lot of scratching like, anymore? Yeah. You hear it on maybe people from our generation stuff, but I don't think you hear it on a Kendrick Lamar. I don't hear I don't hear it on Right. I don't hear it unless I'm yeah, listening it's, to that's a that's a really good point. Wait, who was doing the cuts on that on that album? Is that Sir Beans is on oh, that Sir particular Beans. song, fifty two car pickup, Beans. Um he's part of the cloaks, um D Styles is part of the cloaks and he's he they pretty much share majority of the duties and roach the dj or cloak the dj uh he's also on all of our records as well but yeah um i agree that you know it's a lost art 
um, and, and, and a lot of music. Uh, and I think if anything, when it is thought of to be incorporated, it's more like an afterthought. And I think for us, it's we, we look at everybody that's part of the Cloaks is doing their, their part for the album. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Beans and everybody's going to get the song or know what the concept is and is going to contribute equally in their own way, you know? So, you, so it stands out equally in the music, I believe. I feel like we, we made a conscious decision on all three of our albums to be pretty scratch heavy. Um, and, and part of the reason is like what you said already is like, it used to be a big part of, you know, hip hop and, and our generation of hip hop. And and then I feel like little by little, the, the DJ just became a guy that plays the music for the MC. And then, um, I mean, I, I, I see the shift coming back, you know, to the artistry, but, you know, as the Cloaks, we've always been a fan of, you know, Scratch Pickles, been a fan of Beat Junkies, you know, been a, been a fan of, you know, a lot of these, uh, like, Scratch Heavy groups and, you know, groups that lean towards the DJ, like, like Jurassic Five or, you know, it, even how we mentioned Main Source, how they had two DJs, it, it was a central part of the shit, I mean, even Cool J, it, almost every album back then, they had a yeah. song about the DJ. It's like, Go Cut Creator, Go. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, go. they had a DJ song. Go Cut know? Creator, Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. No, that that's that's a huge, huge part. And I think, I, I mean, you know, I'm sure it exists in, in other, um, you know, other regions, but like in LA and West Coast, like it's still, you know, the DJ is a very big culture still here. You know, yeah. I mean, I felt like the the as things evolved and Serato first came aboard, everyone was like, oh, shit, now you got computer DJs. And then it, then people weren't showing up with DJs and people were using their iPhones when they were doing live sets. And it was like, that shit's whack. You yeah. know, like, you know, it was it was just like a lost. It, and we kind of just were like, yeah, fuck all that. We're going to keep pushing and doing what we do. And and it just was part of our identity from the get. Well, what about uh? It's welcoming and inviting from an older, yeah, like an old lady point of view. <laughs> Do you feel like an old lady? <laughs> no, but thanks, madam. I fear <laughs> that I am. Well, I I don't know. I, I yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that. Uh, well, fuck, I don't know what I hope. Well, I mean, you know, pretty soon you're about to go see abilities, man. You fucking yeah, no, He's exactly. A beast, man, he murders those tables. <laughs> Exactly. And oh, do you want to tell him who else we're gonna see? I do, but I'm gonna wait till I get. I, I want to wait. Oh, you're building. Yeah. Who else? Building. Come on. Well, what about what about uh? Before I get to this other thing, how about a Sophie's Choice? Kendrick Lamar or Lamar Odom? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar Odom. <laughs> no, it depends what what. What year Lamar Odom? Yeah, no kidding. Because he no. had some dope years with the Lakers. Yeah, he was – he yeah, he did. But no, yeah. I, I'll go Kendrick for sure. Well, uh, hey, I guess – I don't know if they said about yours, but I they, I saw it somewhere about um, about uh, AWOL's music that someone called it an emo rap. Do you like that that term, that label, emo rap? Who are you asking? Isn't every fucking rap song an emo rap song? <laughs> yeah, like, I guess so. You got gangsters fucking – Writing love letters. Dude, gangsters. You know, isn't that emo rap? Bone Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> gangsters Paradise. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I saw that. I saw that somewhere. I don't, I, and I don't know if it was. Re- yeah, it, it was, was kind of it, it was actually an article in Spin Magazine, and they tried to categorize all the indie, like, truthful rap. Basically, right. it was just people that were fucking telling the truth. That's and they labeled it emo, which is fine with me. Yeah, but I mean, 
labels or you know whatever man. it's you know? it the label you know like labels are 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 good and bad right they're they're yeah. good to help you know describe things and kind of at least you know orient your your train of thought to certain things right but on right. the other end like emo rap in the context of what tony just responded to makes a lot of sense because that's you know we're, we're we're artists and we write about life right and everything that involved with whereas like so so the emo rap sounds like a bad term or a term that may not feel like you know it's was that dope. what the article was going for were they trying to like it's just my interpretation like Oh, this is sad. This is shit, emo. I don't. I. I don't know. Because it doesn't. Um, it wasn't. Really... It wasn't really like a slight on us. It was just uh, kind of like somebody trying to put all that shit into one category. And, yeah. You know, I think they're just trying to describe like a, you know, a slug song. It, you know, like mm. it's a emotional like love. It's so. It's gonna be a story that brings out some sort of emotion. So I guess they just you know labeled. It makes sense to me. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if you're trying to explain it to somebody who's never heard you or people like you, all they'd ever heard was like Snoop, I guess, or something. Like how you wouldn't. I remember trying to explain it to my stepmom once because we were like, oh, yeah, we let, let, let our little babies listen to. Like you, for instance, were on their playlist. And she was like, oh, and I'm like, but it's not like what, it's not like bitches and hoes and thugs. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I had a hard time trying to tell her. Well, that's what, even that's what Gil so, Rock was saying, that they, that's when it's, when a label or something like that right. is useful when you're. Either way, man, it's, to me, it's, it, you know, if you didn't ask that question about emo rap and you just kind of talked about like just our music in general, uh more so probably as individual solo artists i mean i think that or even even in this record even in the club we're born you got theme mode well i self-diagnose she's got me full of high hopes but i'm walking tight ropes i'm a love sick derelict vision blur kaleidoscope she's got me out of my element an isolated isotope maybe on the physical she's that's talking about you know some relationship stuff you're right there's some there's some stuff in there right it's just Whatever. If people ain't evolved enough to, to to tap into, you know, some dope shit, then they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like if it's like R and B is emo, that's singing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. soul what music is, is emo, right? right? But emo seems like a sort of sort of comes with a negative connotation, especially in hip hop, because it's so masculine in hip hop. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying yeah. if people aren't evolved enough to like get over their fucking egos like i then then let's let's call regular rap ego rap yeah you know what i mean that like, should be true yeah because these so, days kids love i mean fucking emo is not is like is the dope shit now <laughs> you're right it, it went through a period of like you know but a negative connotation yeah I think. for sure and then now yeah. it's more accepted because i think society has evolved more and it's yeah. cool to be in tune with your emotions now yeah. Well, and this is must be an old article because emo's long gone. Like it's like uh -huh. off. It's done. Well, it's what? been and it's come and gone. Oh, emo. Okay. Yeah. Dude, Ooh. old reference, Ty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just I don't know when I when I saw it, I just remember seeing it, I'm like emo rap. Hmm, well, okay, let's see. What so uh, there are these new things that I do on the show. Um the timer went off, but if you guys don't mind, like, give me just a little bit time, more time. But if you guys, we're stuck in your loop. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get some white highlights on this, but I do want to just get through a couple of these things because I kind of forgot about some shit. But so one of these things that I do on the show is a random useless factoid. <clears throat> so today's on this episode, the fact, the random factoid for you guys. Uh, people say that dogs sweat by panting. That is not true. Uh, it is a part of their, uh, it's a part of their body temperature regulation. They do release heat through their tongues while taking short rapid breaths, which expels hot air from their lungs and their body cavities, but it's not their way of sweating. It is also believed that dogs don't sweat at all, but that is also untrue. Uh, it's just that their fur uh, prevents them from releasing the moisture and heat. So they don't have major sweat glands like, like humans do, but they do have them. Um, does anyone know where their sweat glands are? 
Oh, in their anus. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are the anal glands. Come Actually, uh, they're located on their foot pads. Um, and <gasps> that is why dogs' paws can smell so funky. <laughs> like right. armpits, you know. Like. I thought it was the anus because when when you take yeah, your dog to you the have to express that's it. an anal gland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Long so, so I want to know how a walrus uh, cools down. <laughs> Swims in the water. <laughs> What's it gonna do in twenty years? Here's a random a Long random oil. fact. Uh, you know how uh, giraffes cool down? Hold on, let me no, it. camels, camels. Yes. Wait. Do they no. cool down? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Remember, they're in the desert. How does a camel cool down? They, they dig a hole and lay in it. No, they throw up their stomachs. Oh, that's oh. so gross. Really? Yeah, they, they throw up their stomachs, and their stomachs, like, inside lining hangs out, and that's how they cool down, and then they... Oh, my God. And then they just, what, they just they eat Oh, back shit, up? no way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, down? Oh my god! I never want to have a camel yeah. and have it like. I don't uncle that would throw up his stomach lining at the dinner table. <laughs> like, look at this, guys! <laughs> Pot his balls in here. <laughs> don't and buy a camel. Me camel. For dinner. <laughs> hey. Well, that how do they do that when they when you ride them like across the desert? I don't know. I don't like, know. I think ride? they can store there <laughs> for a long time. Maybe. I mean, they're probably. The, Used to it a little. I don't know. Fucking. Yeah, I'm about to about to go on YouTube right now. You know, cam- you also know some something else about camels. Videos. Camels' milk doesn't curdle. Dude, Ooh. how? Oh, never mind. I probably shouldn't say yeah. that appropriate. Yeah. Actually, you know what? You were talking about vagina sense. How does a camel toe cool down? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like a cigarette. Camels have their own cigarettes. Dude. That's the only the same, that's the the same only way animal. the moose knuckle does. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, do you, uh, wait, that's not wow. their tongue hanging out. That's their intestine. That's their intestine. <gasps> no, gross. <laughs> oh, you're looking at you. it already. That's not fair. It looks I like they have you. balls coming out of their mouth. <laughs> but I, t- I, right? <laughs> it's for real, right? You just fact that's check me. Wild. What do you guys remember? Do you guys ever wow. remember Bobby Jimmy and the Critters? Yes, I fucking yeah. loved that Roaches song, the Big Butt song, and and yeah, I, I love that. He even had one that sounded like an Egyptian lover song. I can't think yeah. of it. like I need a freak type of joint. Yeah, ah, that dude was so dope. I I I love when people like I love people having fun with shit like that. He was like the he was like the Weird Al of fucking. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You guys Weird Al fans. Yeah. yeah, he was like the weird owl of uh, old school hip hop. We have a, we have our own weird cloaks version styles, right? Like we, you know, like Cloakwork Orange, we did a uh, cloaks come out at night. The 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 cloaks come out at night. You know. That type of thing. We have some other things we're talking about along those lines, but you know, it's fun. But you know, we're still rocking. Yeah, for sure. But that's the thing. Like, you can have fun with it, still be serious, and still, but still have a good time with it. I don't know. I love that shit. And speaking of your guys' songs, that um, Covenant of the Cloaks. I fucking love that track. And off with the silence. No sword, no stone, no challenge. Put the fear that a man Excalibur time. I'm possible in him. Roll out of the wind, skin sharp, mouth part, full of the sharp side of my art. Ground hard on the star, obsidian, silver heart, all of your, all of car. You won't buy, you don't want to go. Stop stepping on that rapid face. You got that's the great job. Stop the tapes on them on a pick up a lame. Should look up a mask and cape. But we know that your heroes hate. Cause I am with the A game like a game. Yeah, seven, seven, seven. I'm a huge Dose One fan too, so uh, yeah, that fucking that song's fucking badass. Good on you guys. I don't know if you know, but at the end of that song, that's D Styles and Beans going back and forth, four bars, four bars, four bars. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, like yeah. so talking about like having scratches being a focal point of the song. Yeah, because they're cutting hard that, on that. That that song transitions into those cuts and then they go back and forth and those dudes are world-class killers Out of doubt. 
You know what I mean? Like those dudes just, I, I fan out to that song itself just yeah. because of that outro yeah. and how it all came together. You know what I mean? I and hope all people the, I mean, fucking that, that don't, that aren't aware of you guys. I mean, we, we have to be honest. There are people that aren't aware, but I just like people that listen to my show or watch the show. I really want, want them to fucking check, check, check out the Cokes. Cause I fucking love your guys' music. Uh, I don't know. Thank you, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, folks, we, we are very aware that it's not for everybody. We don't, you know, we're, we're not really trying to make something that's like popular or whatever. So like, when you know when when we know that there's people it just to some people like it just hits them right away and it's their shit and then there's people like yeah i don't know man it's you know i can't get with it and that's fine you know and then those people who like come back at us like two years later and like dude i I fucking love you guys now and before Um, i didn't get it now i get it now i understand that's what i was gonna ask you so i guess you do people will grow people who don't get you at first do you grow on them yeah for sure man i mean absolutely i think i even said that in one of the songs on this album some people say we're unfuckable some say the opposite everyone is judging you you know blah 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 we we're good man we're comfortable in our own fucking cloak skin you know what I mean? So yeah. It's all good. That's a good place to be, though, to recognize that you are you are different, but but be com- and being comfortable with that. It takes yeah. a little time to get there. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna grab my dog real quick. Hey, get, Did, dog. Do we, are we having fireside chats with Awol? He's got a fire in the back. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> on, his, on his fucking his, his that's his screensaver. <laughs> but watch, he's starting to go dark. Yeah, it is. He's starting to disappear. <laughs> no, it is a screensaver. Yeah. I've been watching it. Oh, whoa. You just went black and white. I just downloaded the Zoom app for this. So I'm like learning the filters. Messing around with it. Well, let's this, is, this is bougie. Oh, bougie, yeah. bougie Bonton. I knew you would be a pretty dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, pup. Bougie Bonton. <laughs> you got one. And then what? And then where? And then when are you going to get another dog and get a, a pato bantan? Cordo monta bantan. Yeah, we're you know when we're going to get a big dog pretty soon. But uh, oh man, yeah, multiple dogs big, is hard work. It is, man. It is. You're not. But, <laughs> <laughs> We're about to get Antonio robbed. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> oh, Wait, shit. ask that question Damn. again. Ask that Antonio Banderas question again. There he is, yeah. dude. Are you Zorro or fucking? Hell rock. <laughs> the other one, other thing that I got to get to is the question. So we got a trivia question for you guys. So we'll start with Gail Rock with the trivia question, and then and then you'll get your own question, Tony. But so so Gail, what do you want? Medium, hard, or Easy or impossible? Medium, hard, easy, or impossible. That was a bad order. That was. Easy, medium, hard, or impossible. Yeah. For your question. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm going to go medium. Okay. I thought that go. was the trivia question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Which fruit is used to make a black forest gateau? Gateau? Yeah. Fucking black cat? What are we talking about here? Oh man, you almost got it though. It was what black it? cherries. I was gonna say black forest cake is black cherry. So what's a gato? I think that's some kind of cake or some shit. That I I looked at the word and I just took a Do guess. You, guys, you, you know where the it. black forest is? No. It's where the cloaks were born. Did you guys see I had my cloak on for you earlier? Oh no, I did. did. Adrian, that was, did you? I did notice. Yeah. <laughs> when I was crawling around on the on the floor trying to charge my phone, I decided to put it on. Uh, all right, Tony, what about you? Uh, a trivia question. Me- okay. Easy, hard, possible, or medium? Uh, Tony Danza. <laughs> that would be hard. Okay, that one's going to be a hard one. <laughs> uh, medium. Okay. In which city would you find St. Peter's Basilica? Starts with a V. Um, I'm going to go with... The Pope? Yep. Where? The Pope. 
Oh, the Vatican. There you go. <laughs> I cheated for you. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah, I'm so good at trivia. <laughs> I don't even know why I started doing that. I thought the, the I thought the trivia question was hard, medium, <laughs> easy, or impossible. <laughs> I was baffled. <laughs> Well, here's a here's a, one more Sophie's Choice question for you. Um, Guar or Nardwar? Uh, I've seen Guar in concert, uh, and I've I've met Nardwar very briefly. I would go with Guar, man. Awesome. Which brings me to this point: on Friday, Adrian and I are going to see Guar in St. Louis. Oh shit. <laughs> That's dope. Uh, yeah. I've wanted to see him live fucking forever. I'm, my my yeah. aunt got me the the uh, live in Antarctica tape from Guar when I was twelve years old, and I fucking I've loved Guar ever since. So, so you're gonna have dope, so man. much fun. We're gonna yeah. sit up in the balcony though. <laughs> but that's dope that they're playing still. Yeah. And again, you're going to experience that show. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah! Like that's that's a great example of another act that you could not watch and experience like. Like it'll be magic when you're there, you know. Yeah. Two Looking things I'm it. wondering: should I take a raincoat? <laughs> and the other thing is, do you think they'll come out with canes? <laughs> <laughs> come on! I, I would imagine by now there's like <clears throat> some other people in the costumes because they have to be pretty up there in their age. But yeah, I but you, you you might need to bring something because they squirt like Jizz. semen <laughs> and blood and fucking all camel kind of intestines. Shit. Yeah, I'm fuck. I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> camel, yeah, man. Just oh. tell me camel how intestines, do. anal glands, internal balls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cow um, testicles. Let's uh, scented uh, candles. <laughs> Pussy that juice cocktails. Better. Just. <laughs> and oh, then shit. and then we're gonna have to drive back a hundred miles with our blood oh, clergy. While I do these the... these little highlights, I'm gonna def. I'll detail this way more later because I won't be able to do it all right now, but. I'm going to just hit with some of these highlights. I'm going to rapid fire some questions at you guys. Starting with a, um, a Sophie's choice. Factor chandelier or Sia's chandelier? Oh, factor chandelier, man. Yeah, he's fucking dope. Um, no question. Danny Trejo or Danny Elfman? Oof, Danny Elfman. I agree. Um, oh, hey, did not Did you just design a toy for, for Cool Keith or some shit? What? Uh, yeah, we actually did. We we first released it like a couple years ago, and then the 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 cat that put it out he uh, he passed away, and then this other toy company uh, picked it up, and then we just kind of revamped the art real quick and uh, yeah. did another limited edition. And then you guys just did a you guys just performed a show, which also Cool Keith was playing at in back in April. Was that the last show that you guys did on on the twenty eighth? Yeah. yeah, that was a few weeks ago. Yeah, we did that one. A bunch of traffic blows. Are shows back? Like, do you feel like when you go play a show that like shows are back? Are they bigger and better, or are we still working to get to that being in big crowds, large shows kind of vibe? I, I think the vibe is really good because uh, people wanted to get out, and we got, some of us haven't seen each other, you know, in a couple years, and 
you know, so it's just, you know, it's just like kind of like friends hanging out. And it was a, you know, a downtown LA late night hip hop show, man. It is, it is what it is, man. It's, 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 it's dope. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. There's some magic for sure. Yeah. Cause, cause because of people there and human interaction, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia that was in the spot and that's magical you know what i'm saying and it was definitely a good time for sure yeah awesome are, are you guys gonna tour beyond california yeah we actually had a tour planned uh, about two years ago a whole summer tour with the cloaks and uh because of you know you know the situation uh we we, we had to postpone it but we just um, and now, now we're starting to get offers again and, you know, where things are starting to kind of, you know, uh, kind of open up again. So, yeah, we're just, you know, we're just waiting to figure that out. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll happen. It'll go down. You know, uh, we don't, we don't grind like we used to, like jump in a van for a month and just play, you know, uh, venue after venue every day, every day, We don't grind yeah. like that no more. But uh, yeah, we definitely got some tours in the future for sure. So, but are we thinking like a multiple dates tour or like? Yeah, like yeah, we're, long... we're, we're we 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 definitely got some tours in the future, man. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I think we I think we're both. I think we're both probably. Uh, we're probably more more prone to look at like targeted runs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some 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 dope routes that make sense. Yeah. You know, um, the the grind of hit and miss just to be on a tour because you're on the road thing doesn't really work. It's not as practical as it used to be, you know? No. And is that is that that's that's something that uh, it seems like almost all the artists that we've talked to, they discovered because of the pandemic. But, you know, I don't know. Or is it Maybe, just that we've gotten older? <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it's more of the latter. Yeah. Yeah. You start. I don't know for you guys, but you start crunching numbers and you're like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes more sense just to do these little short runs, and you you you, you make more money. Uh, you, yeah. You're not out as long. You're not right. fatigued, and you know, anytime you're out longer than two or three weeks, you start spending a lot of money. And, you yeah, it gets you know, uh, yeah. It's yeah, uh, and, it's, and you it's, fucking it's, and with families at home too, like it, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that gets starts it's, to get even worse. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's a lot funner too. You can enjoy it more when you're doing targeted dates as opposed to you know, yeah, being for on sure. the grind. Because then when you're on the grind, it just takes strain, and then it be, it's, if it takes some fun away from it, then it's you know, becomes work. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Then then <laughs> you're like, what the fuck am I doing this for? Yeah. Well, I, t I held up way, way too much of your guys' time. I thank you guys oh, for being on the show. Be uh, before I let you go, did I, I, do, I, do either of you, did you ever or do you now have a stuffed animal or a whoopee blanket? I've got, a, I've got a, uh, a gorilla downstairs. Is that like, a one, like a, a one that you had forever? No, it's, it's, it was, uh, I don't remember where I got it, but it's just been around. It's just a funny ass. <laughs> you don't gorilla. sleep with him every you don't, day. Yeah, you don't have to snuggle. No, I don't sleep with him. But he he's like usually random places and shit. You know, and like he's been around since my kids were young, and you know, that's whatever. Funny. He just yeah. he's stuck around. He's he funny. On. <laughs> Sometimes, I, like the last time my my cousin came where we got wasted, and he was like all wasted talking to the gorilla, and it was hilarious. You know, <laughs> I don't think uh, I'm. I had an imaginary friend. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't. <laughs> I oh. don't. Uh, I don't. I don't ever remember having like this one, uh, like bear or like blanket or something. I, I'm trying to think. I was. That's a good. That's a good uh, question. Where did that whoopee thing come from? The whoopee blanket. Hmm. Yours, your grandma. No, no. Yours. Wasn't there a movie or something that the kid? The word had? whoopee, huh? I never oh. heard of it oh. until I met you. Oh. Maybe, maybe I had a wooby blanket. <laughs> Speaking of, you just said, um, uh, oh, about imaginary friends. And it made me think of this movie that I fucking loved. The kid had an imaginary friend and I loved the fucking guy. And it was played by Dabney Coleman. And the movie is called Cloak and Dagger. Oh, Ooh. That's right. 
He's a he's imaginary friend, right? Yeah, he's the spy, and I fucking love that guy so much. He, the actor Dabney Coleman was cool, but like that character was so. I just he was like, I don't know. I loved him. I fucking loved that movie was the shit though. Yeah, that movie was so dope. I don't know if it holds up. I haven't watched it since, but that that was uh, I think too obvious to become a title, but obviously that was you know, but no, no. The cloaks and dagger. The cloaks and dagger. <laughs> or, or or maybe just calling the record dagger, you know. Yeah. Or okay. Dabney Coleman with the cloaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to wrap it up the shows, I always do the final philosophical question to close it out. And by the way, thank you again. Uh well, thank you, you guys for hanging Appreciate, with appreciate you both. Thank you, brother. If there was an alien evasion, what will be our response? uh what will be our response or what we think that, the like what, general what do you pop- think's really gonna happen truthfully like what will humans end up doing i mean i think every i think i think uh whatever the government thinks is probably what, ha- what will happen it'll be beyond people's comprehension and out of fear comes the worst yeah of 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 human behavior but the, the the weird shit is that the information that has already leaked, like if that same information would have came out maybe even seven years ago, eight years ago, everybody, everybody would have started panicking. Yeah. And yeah, now it's is. like, they, like the, the, that information basically came out saying, hey, we have contact with things that aren't human. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, but didn't fucking Johnny Depp's girlfriend shit in his bed? Like, <laughs> Wait, I thought Johnny Depp shit in the bed. No, it was his girlfriend. It's all, it's all, uh, until it, until it affects you, like the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Right. Until, but, but as, yeah. as long as there's a distance between you and anything that, you know. Well, maybe the aliens had a hand in it and they slow rolled us. Like first they like put Trump out, like they just slowly started putting out craziness so that <laughs> by the time that they were ready to reveal themselves, we were like fucking big deal. Yeah. <laughs> That we're desensitized 100 percent a lot of these movies that come out like there's like a topic and all they are doing is like desensitizing us and which is fine whatever maybe i shouldn't be so sensitive but yesterday was the first day that or the second time that the pentagon went to congress to have they had to talk about unidentified flying objects right oh, really? yeah yeah i think that was today congress or today right yeah i think so yeah yeah, we're like fuck you. We've seen murder hornets. <laughs> <laughs> we had. It was still wasn't enough, right? I don't. No, think that was that only anything. lasted it. Uh, and right before it was the the was were people dying from vapes, and then it was the murder hornets, and then all of a sudden, fucking, we were trapped in our house. And then you go outside, and all these hornets are fucking vaping. <laughs> <laughs> vaping hornets. Yeah. Gal, I think you're right though. When it comes knocking at your door, that's when it's, it's time. Right. Like. Yeah. It's all fun and games until it's fucking right in your face. Yeah. 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 As, as anything, right? It's Everything. Like, yeah. There, there could be chaos, but as soon as it breaks your bubble, then it becomes reality. Yeah. 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 That's what the cloaks are here for. Yes. Yes. And that's right. Spawn from the, uh, the conscious uncoupling of <laughs> Gwyneth and Chris Martin. That's uh, right. Any, any, <laughs> new ta- <laughs> any new tattoos, AWOL? No. Okay. Um, uh, since I've seen you, yeah, maybe a couple little jammies, this little fucking staircase. I got a little UFO. Shit. You got a little door jam. Yeah, a little. I got one on like Tony Danza's face. <laughs> wearing a wearing a Tony uh, a Tony Danza. Wearing, a, or wearing Dan-Zana. A, a, a Danzana. <laughs> Just looking like a, a cholo. <laughs> well, I think we co- we covered that you guys were going to be touring or anything. But is there anything else besides? The album, yeah, that's that's new out. New new records out. Hit that, um, and then where do you, where do you prefer people getting your information? Uh, what's coming up with you? What's what's your preferred method of uh, getting the word out to the people? Follow the cloaks, Gel Rock, A Wall One. You know, I think we're on all the socials. You know, you can find us as the cloaks on the socials and A Wall One and Gel Rock. Like Abolano Records, your face. Yeah. Uh, com. A-B-O-L-A-N-O records.com. Uh, yeah, Abolano Records is probably the best spot to, to find some stuff. 
Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Anyone has any final words for the people? Uh, just thank you, and we we appreciate it. You know. Yeah, man. Keep keep supporting. Appreciate you for having us on the show, man. It's been fun. Thank you. I'll get this drawing finished up. Even like I'll get a re- looking real dope for you guys because I fucking well, you love you guys and I love Bebop and Rocksteady. Well, here this is what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, that's right. So here's <laughs> what I can do. The way that I did it with uh, with Slug and Dibs is I ripped theirs in half <laughs> and then I gave them each a piece. <laughs> oh shit. Uh. I, I was just thinking, well, Tony's got his drawing already, but I can do a, like a perfect cut down the middle. How, how do you guys want it? I mean, if, if you send it to Gelrock, I could just admire it when I okay. go to his house. <laughs> okay. Because, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know if you could – got, it got kind of dark again because of my uh, whatever, but I got it. Let me see. I got you right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Under, right, under, right under Alex Pardee. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I already, already got a... Already All got right, some. then I'll send, gotta, yeah. I'll send the package to, to Gail. I got a spot for it, trust me. All yeah, right. I see a big one behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah this you is the only spot that this room so far that I have. I have, like, a bunch of records on the floor, and <laughs> this has been the last spot for me to kind of get set up in, but, like, everything downstairs, it's like a little museum and shit. Well, yeah, then I'll send it. Well, I'll I'll get it sent out to you. I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna need to put some work into it, and then we have one episode coming out right before your guys' uh, with Sims. I gotta finish editing that, and then I'll get your guys' episode edited and, and and get it out. So, all right, we're dope. All right, man, much love. Thank you so much, guys. man. Thank you, Appreciate you both. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Hey. Strife. It's Friday night, flavors, and we got a new release. It's Friday night, and I just got paid. Put the liquor mark for some liquor store dank. Grab my drink, double IPA. Now I'm on my way. Cruising with you, Boulevard. Well, there you go. There you have it. The cloaks. Fun, uh, fun couple of couple of guys. Yeah. Yeah. D- uh, hey, Walt. I just love his voice. Uh, you know, I when I hear his voice in my headphones, I'm just like, I just listen to him all the time, and and it sound he sounds like him. I know <laughs> he does sound like him. I I think um when I was listening to that album, their new album this morning, and that this one song came on, I was like, oh, these are the voices of the angels on my shoulders. Like, a wall one is the good angel. <laughs> it's like it's okay, Adrian, just do it. And then those ones the bad angel. Is he? <laughs> like, <laughs> saying the same thing though, because you know I don't like really take any. Uh, I, I'm a cautious person, so he's saying the same we- thing, but just more fast and aggressive. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna text those that. <laughs> but apparently he's the. Devil on your shoulder. No. Oh yeah, Dose is the devil because he reminds me of one of my brothers. I don't know why, but I can't. I know you were saying Every that Every time after I hear him, him, I'm like, "What are you doing, <laughs> brother? You're silly." Yeah. No, yeah, that was fun. That was cool. Uh, what was I? Man, I had a whole like always. I had a whole bunch of questions that I didn't even get around to asking. I got to get better because I just get, I, I start drawing and I just start listening to, to them talk and I don't know, they just, they just I don't know. Yeah, and, and always something funny and clever to say. Yeah, I don't think we even really talk about anything. No, but that's what, I, I realized that today when I was kind of like thinking about what I wanted to get to and discuss and I realized this, that's what the show is. Because we want people to be able to listen to it any time. It's not necessarily to promote any one particular thing. Or... I really just wanted to see El Chapo. I know. The whole time I'm like, call your dog up. Well, we're looking right at him. Here he is. No, I wanted to see the real thing. I don't oh. know what color he is. He's, or she, or is it Brindle? He's, the same. Or... he's like Brindle, yeah. He's a Brindle. I just wanted to see how big he is. Well, was. I have a picture of him, and he's pretty big. I'll... I will uh, I'll share that picture right now. Yeah, see, there you go. There he is. <laughs> I think um, Gail needed to put him in his lap. 
Oh, no, he said it was like a, how, how heavy did he say he was? Pounds. Yeah, you don't want a 185 pound dog sitting in your lap. Um. Well, okay. Any any anything else that you want to that you want to uh, say? Check obviously check out their music. Um, <clears throat> Awa One, uh, you can find his music everywhere. Gel Rock has some uh, single stuff, but I I. I'm certain he has uh, some other stuff that you can get somewhere, but not on the uh, Spotify. They can't just get a Gel Rock album. But um, the Cloaks you can get anywhere. And then I forget the name of that record label, but I'll look it up and post that again. That's uh, who releases the Cloaks albums. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, things like Shapeshifters, uh, Trollin Cinco, Tumex. These are all people that are... that come out of their same that same pocket of of, of rappers and mm -hmm. and have that same vibe and, and and people you should check out okay well thanks for joining us uh i think the scheduling of the dod 45s is going to change but that won't matter uh, if you're watching them whenever you're watching them or listening to them whenever you're listening to them it doesn't really matter when so and if you happen to be coming through Hannibal, Missouri on your road trip, yes, stop by Art by Ty's Gallery, but do check the old blue gng.com website to make sure that we're not closed and at a, a gallery or at a festival or something. Also, still available. We sold out in the first run, but now we got more. The, the Book of Arms, Art by Ty's Book of Arms. Uh, 178 pages of... Octopi. Oc things with tentacles and, and stuff. So it's a really cool book. Got a lot of great reviews. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us on DOD 45. Um, we'll see you uh, sometime soon. Like or comment below and uh, check out other episodes if you have. Oh, yeah. also, if you can, it's always good to go on to uh, Apple Music and leave us a review or something. Then it puts the, you know, the... Whatever. You know what you're doing. Smash, smash, smash. Like, subscribe, like, subscribe. Boom, pa, 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 pa. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Peace. Bye. The thoughts in my head take place in my bed. And I don't have to lie, but I do that instead. Things that need to be said, poison in my brain like that. Thanks for watching this episode of DOD 45. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to ever miss an episode. Also stick around my YouTube page for a bit. There's a whole array of videos to enjoy, including time-lapse videos, drawing tutorials, and live streams. It's like an amusement park. Now click that subscribe button and go watch another episode of DOD 45. Cheers. <laughs>